Now I can go. Well, good morning again, everybody. Let's, uh, let's start by opening our Bibles to uh, Second, Second Timothy. The title of this morning's message is Zealous of Good Works. And work is a word that uh, shows up in the scripture about, in, in various forms about 800 times. Uh, one that I think of quite a bit is Psalm 19.1 for, for uh, you know, we look up at the stars and we, we see the handiwork of God. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament uh, displays His handiwork. But uh, so it's about 800 times it shows up work and we want to make sure that as we talk about work, uh, in good works, that we, that we're, all, we're all crystal clear on the fact that work are not required for salvation, aren't we? There's no doubt about that. But you never know who might be uh, watching this video, and, and sometimes I, uh, I've looked at the numbers. Sometimes there's over five people that look at the video. So uh, who knows, maybe one of the five or ten or whatever the number turns out to be does not know that salvation is, uh, is, is not by works. Uh, and we have the verses to back that up right, right ready at our hand, don't we? Sure we do. Uh, Romans 4, 5, not by, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And of course we have Ephesians 2, 8 and, two, and 9. Uh, we have, uh, and then we have uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 that says, it, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Believes required for salvation, not works. But, uh, so we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and, and uh, what I want to look at too is, is uh, uh, of course, the greatest worker in the Bible is God Himself. And uh, you don't have to go very far to find that out. Genesis 1-1, we know that verse. In the beginning, God created the, the heavens and earth. But in Genesis 2, it says, in verse 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended His work, which He had made. And He rested on the seventh day from all His work, which he had made. Verse 3, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in, in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. God, the greatest worker of all time, of course. But uh, let's look at some verses that have work in them. And since the title of the message is Zealous of Good Works, we're going to be at, the question today is, is, are you zealous of good works? And what are good works? I mean, if you, if you had a minute right now to write down what your good works were, what would you write down? So, not possibly being all that clear about what good works are. I think it's a good, uh, a good subject to broach. And, and we'll take a, we've got a lot of verses to look at, so this ought to... This, uh, it certainly has been enjoyment for me to go over them again. I've been thinking of good works for years and years and years and trying to decide what are good works. And, you know, because uh, the, the Word of God mentions them. So uh, if the Word of God is going to take the time to mention what good works are... It's certainly a good idea for us to understand what they are. Number one, though, is 2 Timothy chapter 2, in verse 20. It says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So remember that, prepared unto every good work. Uh, just to the right a little bit in Titus. So we're, be to, we're to be prepared unto good works, but also in 2 Timothy it says we're, 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 uh, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished 
unto all good works. That's what the Word of God is for. He'll, he'll furnish us uh, uh, by letting us know what good works are. In Titus chapter 2, verse 7, verse 6, Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing corrupt, uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. So young men, and that's everyone uh, younger than the oldest person, the oldest man that you know, would be young men. It says young men be, have a pattern of good work. And I, when I think of a pattern of good works, it's a, it's a habit. It becomes a habit. Good works should become a habit. We have a pattern of good works. Titus chapter 3, Paul winds up this epistle in verse 14. He says, and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. So we're to maintain good works. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, it talks about women. And we know what women are to do, right? They're 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, Verse 9, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So they adorn, women adorn themselves with good works. And the example of that, of course, is Tabitha. Uh, the cross-reference there is Tabitha in uh, Acts chapter 9. It said that she was full of good works. That's something, if you're going to be full of something, uh, that's something good to be full of. Full of good works. 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Charge them to be rich in this world and we all qualify. That they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth, giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Rich in good works. Back to Titus. Titus chapter 1. Verse 15. Under the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him being abominable and disobedient and under every good work, reprobate. You can define reprobate by it's missing the mark. Reprobate. And then finally, in chapter 2 of Titus, it's probably, uh, I would say, one of my favorite passages of all time. I did homeschool for eight years, and, uh, and what I had the children do was memorized four verses of Scripture, but not only that, I had them write it out. I must have heard somewhere that, you know, if you're going to memorize it, it's fine, but if you can write it out, it's better. And I required them to have capitalization correct, punctuation correct. They'd have to write it down, and I was the uh, Bible teacher, so I got degraded, and I would turn it back to them if, they were, if it was incorrect, and they did it again. Uh, hopefully they've remembered it over the years. I don't know. I don't quiz them and ask them if they did, but maybe they did. But starting in verse 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, 
that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. And that is the title of the message, is zealous of good works. I tried to dig out a, uh, a Webster's definition for the word zealous, and the best one-word definition that I could come up with is eager. You know, if Paul says, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel. Paul was ready to preach the gospel. Uh, there's another, I don't know where it is, but it says ready to distribute. Uh, ready, ready unto good works. They were just, they were ready. Uh, so. so anyway, as far as good works goes, here's, here's the way they, that it would roll there. Uh, uh, and, and consider this, everything is for yourself. You know, that we want to see how this applies to us in our life as we live it, of course. But we're to be prepared unto good works. We're to show a pattern of good works. We're to maintain good works. We're to adorn good works. We're to be rich in good works. We're not to be reprobate in good works. And we're to be zealous in good works. In other words, God thinks good works are important. There's a lot of instruction about good works. So with that said, let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. And Father, we do thank you for another day of your grace and for who we are in Christ and all that we have in Christ and for the opportunity and privilege that we have to uh, represent you and to exhibit works in our, in our lives. As, uh, as it says in Acts, works meet for repentance. A change of mind that we had that we, that we got saved and the change of mind we have when we trust you and believe you and we thank for Thank you for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I mentioned earlier, as we, as we read in Genesis chapter 2, uh, God and, and, and where He is on works. And He's, uh, of course, the greatest worker of all time. But uh, there, there, that's what we want to look at first, is how does this relate to God. And turn to Psalms. There's a bunch of verses in Psalms about that. So uh, start with chapter 40 of Psalms. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 9, 12, and 24, they're exhorted to remember and talk about all God's marvelous and wondrous works. Psalm 40, verse 5. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, we're talking about his wondrous works, they are more than can be numbered. His wondrous works. Psalm 104. Psalm 104, verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Verse 31. The glory of God shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. Can you just see God rejoicing in His works? Psalm 105, verse 2. Sing unto Him, sing psalms unto Him, talk ye of all His wondrous works. Verse 5. Remember His marvelous works that He hath done, His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. Psalm 107, verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 22. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. Psalm 143. Verse 
Verse 5. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. We think about it. There's a definition of muse right there. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hands. And then we had the one I mentioned earlier. is uh, For the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The works of God. We can see those, can't we? Walk out in the morning or late. I'm, I'm never awake at midnight. Uh, but I can walk out early in the morning and look up and see the stars. We can see his works. The heavens declare his glory. Those are some of his works, but the works that we're probably most familiar with are what he did for us through his Son. We all know Romans 5, 8, it says, For God commendeth his love towards us. He put it on display that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He commended his love for us. God did that. And then another work of God that we should all be very familiar with and personal with is in Ephesians 2.10. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Philippians 1.6 it's nice to have confidence in it, isn't it? Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in us shall perform it. Is he performing a work in you? Philippians 2.7 says, Better look at it. Philippians 2 7. Philippians 2 7. Here's a work of God. Starting in verse 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of man, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The work of the cross, that's the work of God. The Lord Jesus Christ made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. His obedience to his Father and his love for us uh, propelled him to the cross where he suffered, shed his blood, and died for us. That's the work of God. So if we looked at the work of God, we, we understand what uh, we started, hopefully get an understanding of good works, but there are also some works that are not so good. Look at Colossians. Paul's epistles are full of warnings and bewares. Colossians chapter 1 he starts out by saying, and you, that's all believers. You qualify for this verse. <laughs> we do. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through, the, through death present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. That was our status before we were saved. We were enemies in your mind, but we were enemies in our mind by wicked works. Wicked works. Uh, Ephesians 2, 1 says, And you hath he now quickened who were dead in trespass and sins. 
Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Romans 13, 12 says the same thing. It talks about unfruitful works of darkness. And... Without a doubt, we're not to be zealous of unfruitful works of darkness. But Paul considers them enough to where he warns us twice about them. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, uh, it's always interesting to look at, and there's a verse here that, uh, uh, or a passage that uh, applies. Works. So the, the question still gets back to, you know, if, 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 if you had to take a minute and write down, and I th- I'm quite sure that as we go through this and, and, and work through it, you're going to have a list of, uh, if, 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 if your list right now, if you had to take it before we started and somebody said, what are your good works? And you had to, you know, make a list of them. And you had to write them down. It'd be interesting to see what the list would be. Okay, and the reason for this is we want to, because God is so uh, interested in, in good works, it'd be nice to have what we consider to be good works line up with what he says are good works. And a lot of the things we may be involved in that are work that we're doing, he may not consider as good works. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I work, I've been working now since, uh, at a full-time job since uh, 1974. And I mean, I worked before then. I started, you know, we all started working as kids doing one thing or another, selling uh, seashells to tourists, whatever. Um, But I've been working full-time since then. That's a lot of work. And, you you know, Todd works a lot. (laughs) Des works in the ministry. You know, there's, there's a lot of work going on. You're working in school. Uh, you take a look at that work, you know, and you want to be able to uh, justify it and reconcile it, what you're doing, what you're doing, spending your time. Here's what the, the writer of Ecclesiastes says in Ecclesiastes 2, verse 4. He says, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. Those were his great works. Verse 5, I made me gardens and orchards. Verse 6, I made me pools of water. Verse 7, I got me servants and maidens. Verse 8, I gathered me also silver and gold. Verse 9, based upon all that, so I was great. Look what I did. Look at all my works, I'm great. And increased more than all that were before me, I was better than the competition. I was greater than that guy, and I was greater than that guy. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Verse 10, And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. Well, I've had one of these and one of those. I had one of them, and I had two of them and three of them, and I had a couple of them, and I had some of them, and I had some more of them. I withheld not my from my heart any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Verse 11, Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. That is not God's only warning in His Word about the works of our hands. Normally it has to do with, uh, go, let's go there, Jeremiah. The works of thy hands. Jeremiah chapter 1. 
verse 16. God says, I will utter my judgment against them touching all their wickedness who have forsaken me and have burned incest unto other gods and worshiped the works of their own hands. Look what I did. Look what I've got. Look what I did. Jeremiah chapter 25. We're talking about works here. Works of thy hands. Jeremiah chapter 25. Verse 6. And go not after other gods to serve them. And to worship them. And promote Provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Verse 7, Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. There were different kinds of works of their own hands, and they were building idols, you know, actual idols to worship, and, and we build idols to worship too, or you can. So, we have good works, we have works to, that aren't good, the warnings in, in, in the Word of God about them. So, back to the list of good works. What, what would you write down on your list for your good works? Uh, showing up today? Uh, helping support the ministry financially? Um, being nice to animals? There are a lot of things that fall under the, the heading of works, but uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. What I've got here, and if you have pencil and paper and are so inclined, is things that could be considered good works. Things that you may want to consider as a good work so when you think about good works which which you should because it's uh god does quite a bit you'll be able to say that's a good work things that you might already be doing that you didn't know were a good work but they are a good work paul says simply in in romans chapter 1 verse 9 that he served that uh, he served God with his spirit. His work began right up here. He didn't say that I served God by going on a mission trip to Costa Rica and building a, a building for uh, you know people to come and get together and whatever they do there. You know he he didn't say he he, he serves God with his spirit. First Corinthians chapter ten. Verse 31. In the middle of the verse it says, Whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. That covers everything, doesn't it? If you do all, if you look at what you're getting ready to do, whether it's uh, picking up pine cones that have fallen on the ground, or encouraging a, bro a brother and sister in Christ, or just enjoying fellowship with them. Do all to the glory of God, and I believe that comes under the heading of good work, a good work. And then you go back, when, once you see the, these things that line up as good work, it, you go back to the beginning, you say, well, I'm, I'm prepared unto good works, I'm going to have a pattern or a habit of good works, I'm going to maintain these good works. I'm going to be rich in good works. These are possibilities. And I'm going to be zealous or eager of these good works. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says we're to be ambassadors for Christ. That's a good work. Put, your, put down ambassador. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says that we're to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Imaginations, you know, you, 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 you take things in and then maybe you, work, you take in something that's not that good and you work on it and you work it over and before long you have imaginations. And you cast them down. Casting down imaginations in every high thing. There's, uh, there's all sorts of things that, that, exalt, it's, that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And you cast them down, you get rid of them. It takes a work to do that. If you're involved in doing that, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, it's a good work. Ephesians, look at Ephesians chapter 2. And this, uh, this short list that I have here is far from being exhaustive. And... And in, in, in our lives as believers, I just think it's vitally important to, to, un, to realize that what we're doing is a good work. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh now in the children of disobedience. Before we were saved, this is what our life was. We walked according to the course of this world. I did, I think. Hopefully not so much anymore. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Good works has a lot to do. Good works and walk go, go hand in hand. Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Verse 17 says, And this I say and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as others walk in the vanity of your mind. If your mind is producing vanity and you can move away from producing that vanity in your mind, it takes work. It's a good work to do that. Same chapter, verse 22. Put off concerning the former conversation the old man. That's a work. Verse 24. And he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness... The simp simplicity of put off, put on, is a work. It's a good work. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 15, more about our walk, more about our life. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Make the most of the time that we have, redeem it. Redeem the time. Redeeming the time is a good work. Chapter 6. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. And then it goes through there through verse 20. The believer's warfare. The details of putting on the whole armor of God. Putting on the whole armor of God is a good work. But you get into the details of it and you see more specifically what that involves and what the, good, the details of the good work there. Paul tells the Philippians to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The details of our lives are important. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Working out those details is a good work. In Philippians and Colossians, he uses the word let a total of 14 times. If you're interested, you can go, go to those epistles, look for the word let, and write those down. Those are good works. Let, allow, do. Good works. He tells Timothy in the first epistle, chapter 4, to give attendance to reading. That's an easy one. Reading the Word of God is a... Good work. 
Same chapter, meditate upon these things. Meditate upon these things is a good work. Are you zealous of that good work? Any, are you zealous of any of these good works? Are you eager to do them and you go, man, let's get with the program. I'm eager. Let's go. Let's do it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 says, study. It's a good work. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Chapter 4. Preach the word. And the number one place to preach the word is to yourself. Have you ever done that? I'm sure you have. Oh, yeah, that's a good work. Preach the word. In season, out of season. Be ready. Paul tells Timothy in the same chapter, do the work of an evangelist. That's a good work. Galatians, uh, back up a little bit in Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. This applies, of course, to every one of us. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. But let every man prove his own work. Take the time to do it. Check out your works. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. The underlying there is uh, not proving the works of another. Prove your own works. Prove your own works. Verse 9. Good works can get tiresome. Verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Isn't it nice to have the opportunity to be involved in good works with other believers? We're not in this by ourselves. Paul tells the Philippians, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. But at the end of, uh, at the end of Romans, he, he, Paul mentions Timothy and he calls him my fellow worker. Fellow soldiers and companions in labor. John chapter 6. A couple of verses and we'll close. John chapter 6. I think this captures the essence of good works. John chapter 6, verse 28. Then say they unto him, Jesus, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Believe. Uh, that, that you can circle it there. Believe. Believe God. Believe the verses. Believe God. We know that the Word of God works in us effectually when we believe it. But believe God. That's what he said. It, it, verse 29. This is the work of God that ye believe on him who he hath sent. Believe. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter three, verse ten. 
So we've got all these, uh, all these ideas for good works and maybe based upon a closer look at them or it should be based upon a closer look at what God considers to be a good work and what you're going to line up with being a good work. Um, it, it, there's going to be an effect. There's going to be a reckoning for those good works. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For, no, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built Thereupon he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, so as by fire. So we get down to the motivation of good works. Why do good works? Well, Number one, it's not just of yourselves. We know that God, is, we're His workmanship. We can be confident that He's working unto us, unto good works. Uh, and the motivation shouldn't be quite here, rewards. I'm doing, I'm doing these good works, I want rewards. I, I don't think that's a proper motivation. I think the proper motivation is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It's always worth looking at. I t- tell you what it is, but, uh, I mean, why do it? You know, why do this? So you can puff up your flesh and go, look what I've done, God. Man, you got a good deal in me. No. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, this verse we'll close with. For the love of Christ constraineth me. Because we thus judge that if one died, then we're all dead. The love of Christ constraineth us. That love that we can't be separated from. The love that propelled him to the cross to die for us, to give us life. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for that. And we thank you that, uh, that, that, uh, that we can be zealous of good works. Ready to do them. Prepared and all that goes along with good works. And we thank you so much for that opportunity in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.